Getting ready to buy or sell a home? Do you want to help support pro-life organizations? Then you need Real Estate for Life. Get a top-notch real estate agent and support pro-life causes. Go to realestateforlife.org to learn more. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate Saint Polycarp, Bishop and Martyr. He is a very important bishop for the fact that he was a disciple of Saint John the Evangelist, and by this apostle was consecrated the Bishop of Smyrna in the Asia Minor. And in Asia Minor, he was one of the foremost bishops for the fact that he was linked with the beloved disciple, one of the 12 apostles, and he personally knew other apostles as well. Saint Polycarp uh, came to Rome from Smyrna and uh, to see the Pope, Anicetus, and to discuss with him the date of Easter. But they did not find an agreement to celebrate Easter on the same date. But uh, there was, according to the Pope, freedom in celebrating the Easter, even if the calendars were not coinciding on the same day, the mystery of our Lord's passion, death, and resurrection was in any case celebrated and intact in its mystery and reality. But in his journey to Rome, he met some of the heretics present in this holy city, and we are in the second century. Among those heretics, there was Marchion, and there was also Valentinian. Marchion was the one who began, an, uh, unfortunately, a way of understanding the Holy Scriptures as split in two. There is, there was, according to him, a bad evil God, the God of the, New, the Old Testament, and a good God, the God of mercy in the New Testament. Of course, this is not acceptable. God is one. Though there is a progressive revelation from the Old Testament towards the New Testament, but God is always the same, just and merciful at the same time. And when Marchion met St. Polycarp in Rome, he immediately, in order to show off his doctrine or his reputation, asked St. Polycarp, do you know me? And in replying to this man, St. Polycarp said, yes, I do know you. You are the firstborn of the devil. This is very interesting to understand how the apostles and St. Polycarp uh, were thinking of these heretics, a kind of uh, tumor uh, to the faith and a great danger for the people to lose their faith. We have to be bold about this. We have to say that heresies are like a cancer to the faith. St. Polycarp then was martyred under Marcus Aurelius in 169. This great figure of a saint, and since his uh, contiguity with the apostles, and in particular St. John, gives us the opportunity to reflect on an important doctrinal uh, point the so-called apostolic succession. The apostles, in order to ensure the continuity within the church and the 
the mysteries to be still celebrated after their death appointed their successors to continue their ministry and to be the living, visible bond between the church, the local churches spread, in this case, in Asia Minor, and Christ. So the apostles provided already to the churches their successors to continue their ministry. And this apostolic bond between the apostles and their successors is sacramental, is grounded on the sacrament of holy orders, the episcopal ordination. And this is the bond, unbreakable bond, historical bond between the successors of the apostles, all the bishops, and Christ himself to safeguard the unity of the church and especially the continuity of the church throughout the centuries. The church is always one and the same because of this sacramental continuity, which is an apostolic succession sacramental bond. By this apostolic succession, we can recognize the only true Church of Christ, the Church that Christ founded on the Apostles and had continuity, historical continuity throughout the centuries up to this present moment. The Church is one and her indissoluble unity is recognized thanks to this succession. And St. Polycarp is the very first witness to this succession, to this visible bond of unity and continuity of the Church. For us, this is important because there are unfortunately, we should say, many Christian denominations and sometimes people are puzzled what is the true Church? Where should I go to to find Jesus? There is only one church. Jesus founded one church, and this is recognizable uh, through this visible bond, sacramental bond of unity. And this was what brought to the Catholic Church a great English saint, Saint John Harry Newman, who in studying the fathers was convinced that only the Roman Catholic Church had that unbreakable unity with the apostles, with Christ. Let's pray to Saint Polycarp, Bishop and Martyr for our church, for the unity of Christians, so that all Christians of goodwill might come back to the only flock of Christ, his holy church. Amen. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.